Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Alex Piper. I'm a complete guitar hack, but I do have a passion for it and that's really what's important. About a year ago, a friend of mine mentioned that he had an old guitar and asked me if it was worth anything. Now normally when a friend says that to you, it's usually not going to be worth much or there's no real significance to it. So I said, shoot me a couple pictures. He lives about five miles away. About three hours later, I get about five or six images from my phone and I literally had to take a breath, <sighs> looked at the phone and messaged him back. So how long have you had the guitar? He messages back, about 45 years. And I went, yes, I'd be interested in it. Well, it took a little while for me to convince my wife that I could buy this thing. And uh, let me tell you what I found. It is, in automotive terms, a barn find. This was bought for him when he was a small child, less than 10 years old, he remembers. He took lessons for about two years. He put it back in the case, and it basically hasn't been out of the case in 50 years. When I got it, when I went to his house, he literally pulled it out from under his bed. And it was full of dust. The cardboard, cut the chipboard case is, looks like it's been damaged um, of 50 years. But inside was this. A near flawless 1967 Gibson SG Jr in rare Polaris White. I've done some research. They've made about 1,100 SG Juniors in 1967, and less than 80 of them were in Polaris White. Now, most SG, SG Juniors uh, have a rosewood neck, and the paint comes up to the neck, and it's just a standard neck. Um, the Polaris actually got binding all the way up on the neck. It's still the standard dots, but it is bound, not at the headstock, just at the fretboard. Now, I don't know if this is gonna focus in really well, I don't have it on autofocus, but there is nary a check mark from the nitro uh, cracking. There's one small chip right here the headstock is nearly flawless. It has the six digit serial number starting in zero, so we know it's a 67. I did replace the tuners. Uh, these are the Klusen strip style tuners that they came with, but a very few, sporadically through the year, 68, 69, came with these Japanese inexpensive open back tuners. Uh, these don't hold tune really well, so I did swip them out, switch them out with the period correct style uh, strips. Uh, bone nut, obviously. Um, one thing I noticed is that the nut itself, the strings are a little loose in it, and a appraiser, or a luthier and appraiser, explained to me that back then, 12s, 13s were really common, so they were cut for that. I'm running 9s now. I'll probably go to 10s to kind of fill that in. But uh, it is just absolutely flawless. I actually like the vibro, uh, the, vib the, will the wiggle stick, if you would. Uh, it sounds really good. Holds a tune. But this P90 pickup, there is something special about these pickups. And maybe even this one in particular. The nickel plate on it is absolutely flawless. It is, like I said, it's, it's near perfect. And man, it does sound nice. I'm going to do some basic chords just so you can hear what this P90 can do and how absolutely aggressive it can get. Um, if somebody with the last name of Bonamassa would happen to pull up with just a back seat full of cash, yeah, I'd probably sell it. But uh, otherwise, I'm going to think I'm going to be keeping this one pretty much forever. I am going to go through, I've got a 5E3 clone, uh, Fender Deluxe clone from uh, 
the 50 style with two 12 inch Weber El Nico speakers in it. It's a fantastic amplifier. Again, just going to do some general tones. I'm going to go through a Spring King reverb because the 5E3, as you know, doesn't have a reverb on it. So let me quick turn, plug this in and turn it on. I'm going to start with the guitar tone at about six and the volume at about four. Okay. I'm just going to do standard. Okay. Very chimey, sounds telly almost. sounding guitar. I'm going to go up a little bit with the volume to about seven. It starts getting a little aggressive. touch the amplifier. I have not done anything else. I'm not running through a distortion pedal. The difference between 7 and 10 on these P90s, these 60s P90s, the single pickup, it is free. This thing just is insane. <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. Just a... You know when they sound really good unplugged? You know how good they're going to be plugged in. This is a fun, fun guitar. Um, I just, I, I get it. This thing, um, this is my first vintage. I've got a couple P90 guitars. I know how they sound. But there's something about this thing made it to just a single P90. It breathes better. I don't know why. I know it deals with the magnetics and having that extra magnet up there causes the strings to not quite vibrate as freely. But let me tell you, this thing is just amazing. And if you're thinking you're a shitty guitar player, you don't deserve this guitar, <laughs> you're absolutely right but it wants me to get better. This thing's making me want to get better. I think I'm gonna take lessons. I haven't taken a lesson in my life. I think I'm gonna take lessons. And uh, sip a little bourbon and enjoy this amazing guitar.
Thanks for watching.